Is wireless bad for your health? This is a question a lot of people are beginning to ask as we bring more and more wireless devices into our lives. From the cell phones and access points we've all had for years, to the smart TVs and smart speakers and Bluetooth headsets, the list goes on. Our lives are inundated with wireless devices at this point. And people are starting to wonder, is it actually safe? It can be a little challenging to separate fact from fiction. There's a lot of misinformation out there, and even the information that's good information can sometimes be very hard to understand. So in this video, I'm gonna break it all down for you and tell you exactly what you need to know to keep yourself and your family safe. Stick around, this is where we stand. Hey, thanks for sticking around. My name is Ethan, and I've been a technology professional for about 25 years. I've been installing wireless devices since the beginning, and they're super convenient. In the old days, we used to have to run cable everywhere to all the devices, and then when wireless technology came out, it was a tremendous convenience. What we're starting to see now, though, after 20-something years of use, is that it's come with a price. It turns out that exposure over long term to wireless radiation does have some consequences, and I'm going to get into those in a few minutes. A few years back, I found myself in the hospital with an autoimmune disease that just sort of came out of nowhere. In the end, the doctors couldn't really give me an explanation. They just told me I had an autoimmune disease and good luck. Uh, and so I began to do a bunch of research to try to figure out what went wrong. I was a pretty healthy guy. I ate pretty well, I exercised, uh, but all of a sudden uh, I just got really, really sick. I got better. Well, it turns out that all of the wireless devices that I've spent the last 20 plus years of my life next to have started to have some serious consequences and I have now become what's called electrohypersensitive. This is a condition that is becoming more and more widespread globally as more and more people uh, essentially reach their saturation point of how much wireless radiation that their bodies can handle. It's kind of like smoking. If you smoke a single cigarette, you'll be fine. If you smoke 10 cigarettes, probably not a problem. In fact, you could probably even smoke for a year, and then if you quit, you'd probably be all right. But if you smoke for 10 or 20 years, probably gonna have some pretty serious health consequences. Well, it turns out that wireless is pretty much the same way. We get to a point in our bodies where the cells just can't take it anymore and start to manifest some pretty serious health problems. Over the last 20 years, there have been a lot of studies conducted on the health effects of wireless. And by a lot of studies, I mean thousands, like 4,000 plus. In fact, if you go to the Bio Initiative report, you can look them up. They summarize all these thousands of different reports. And the long and the short of it is that extended exposure to wireless radiation does cause some pretty serious health problems. And these can range from anything uh, as benign as skin problems and rashes and um, dandruff. Um, to sleeplessness and anxiety, uh, to autoimmune diseases and gastrointestinal problems, uh, to cancer, all sorts of different cancers. Um, I've now had two different clients uh, who have died uh, from brain cancers on the right side of their head, uh, which is uh, incidentally where most people are getting brain cancers these days because most people are right-handed and most people use the right hand to hold their cell phone. Interestingly enough, if you look in your cell phone manual that you got when you bought that phone, uh, somewhere in the back of that manual, it actually does say not to hold the phone against your body. Now, of course, nobody reads that manual, nobody follows those guidelines, uh, but they're in there and they're in there for a reason. Uh, the World Health Organization has actually classified wireless exposure as a class 2B carcinogen, uh, which is a possible carcinogen. So this is kind of where things go before they fully admit that, yeah, it's a pretty serious problem. We're, we find ourselves in an interesting situation because it very closely resembles what was going on with the tobacco industry some 70 years ago. If you recall, in the 50s, uh, some studies started coming out about the health effects of smoking and how smoking could contribute to lung cancer and emphysema and a host of other uh, health problems. Uh, but it took about 20 years between when those first studies were completed that really proved that smoking caused all these health problems to when anything was really done about it. 
Uh, the government didn't do anything about it. Uh, Philip Morris and the tobacco companies certainly didn't come out and say that tobacco uh, was harmful um, until about 20 years had gone by. And finally, after unfortunately millions of people had died from lung cancer, um, the industry and the government kind of acknowledged, yeah, it turns out smoking is bad for you. We find ourselves in a similar situation with wireless today. Uh, we're in that area where people have started to realize that there are some pretty serious health consequences to wireless exposure, um, but there's a lot of industry pushback that really doesn't want to admit that that's the case. And so it's up to you and all of us to make health choices for ourselves. So I wrote a book about this whole subject last year uh, because it's something that I feel really strongly about. Uh, I consistently go into people's homes and businesses and I see really unsafe situations where people are working right next to their wireless access points, uh, cell phones tucked in the pockets all day long, uh, stuff like this that now that I know um, just is clearly unsafe. And so um, I got tired of seeing that over and over and over again, and now having lost several people to brain cancer, uh, I really wanted to get the word out. So I put a book up on Amazon. I really highly recommend you read it. It's super short, easy to understand, uh, but I'm gonna cover a lot of that in this video. So let me take you through uh, some of the contents of my book and then some other information that will help you understand uh, just how serious this problem is. Okay, so this first graphic here uh, is basically the electromagnetic spectrum. So this shows uh, all the different frequencies and where stuff falls on that. So like on one end we've got um, power lines and uh, radio, and then we move through uh, what we're going to deem the wireless range uh, up into uh, visible light and gamma waves and so forth. Uh, so for our intents and purposes for this discussion, we're really focused on that middle section there, um, right around one gigahertz on up to uh, maybe five or 10 gigahertz, although now uh, with 5G technology, they're pushing well beyond that. Uh, but most of our wireless devices today uh, are right around two gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, a lot of new access points are five gigahertz. Um, and there's still some uh, stuff being broadcast all the way down to like 900 megahertz. So that'd be just below one gigahertz. Um, but these are the types of devices we're talking about. This, this encapsulates uh, Bluetooth and cell phones and wireless access points and laptops and tablets and uh, earbuds and all those wireless devices. They're right kind of in that two gigahertz range. This chart is uh, a little bit misleading because uh, you can see the microwave is next to the wireless, is next to the cell phone. Uh, in reality, those are all really the same frequency. In fact, um, if you go and use uh, a meter to measure the radiation of your microwave oven, uh, you'll see that it cooks at about 2.4 gigahertz. Incidentally, that's the exact same frequency uh, as your tablet and your laptop and your access point. So 2.4 gigahertz is kind of the, the, the range that we've chosen to broadcast our data uh, and cook our Hot Pockets. So I uh, often tell people, think about that. Your, your Hot Pocket is done in, what, a minute in the microwave, uh, and yet we've been holding these phones next to our head for 20 years. So the argument from the industry is that, yeah, but it's much lower power. Your phone isn't 1,000 watts or 1,500 watts like a microwave oven. Uh, it's maybe one watt or, or something in a, in a much lower range. Uh, the difference is that we've been holding those phones next to our head for 20 years. One of the reasons 2.4 gigahertz was chosen as the frequency to use for all of our wireless devices is because it's really good at penetration, at going through things, going through walls, going through trees, um, incidentally, going through people. Uh, this is why your microwave cooks food. It, you know, the, those, uh, the radiation penetrates all the way into the inside of that food and cooks that food. Um, incidentally, that same frequency of radiation goes into our bodies uh, and starts having some serious effects uh, on our cellular function. So we're gonna come back to that later, uh, but it's important to understand here that 2.4 gigahertz um, is the same for all your wireless devices pretty much uh, as it is for your microwave oven. 
Okay, this next graphic is actually a screenshot from a TED Talk back in 2016 by Jeremy Johnson. It's a great TED Talk. I highly recommend you go watch it. Uh, he really lays all this stuff out in uh, a very easy to understand way. Um, but the point of this particular graphic that's really interesting to note is that of all the studies that are out there, uh, they did this study of those studies. And what they found was that of the independently funded studies, about 70% of those studies showed a direct correlation between wireless exposure and health problems. Now of the industry funded studies, so these would be studies funded by Verizon and T-Mobile and Spectrum and uh, the other wireless providers, of these industry funded studies, only 32% showed a correlation between wireless exposure and health problems. So the long and the short of it is that the independent research shows that there's most definitely a correlation between wireless and health problems, and the industry is kind of trying to cover it up. Please, please! This is supposed to be a happy occasion. Let's not bicker and argue about who killed who. Okay, so let's move on to this next chart. Uh, this is a chart of brain cancer since 1995. Uh, we're up about 350% uh, on brain cancer. This chart's actually from the UK. Uh, incidentally, a lot of cancer charts, if you want accurate data, um, need to come from Europe because in the United States, uh, the industry has very clever ways of manipulating data. And I'll get into that in a later video. This chart follows a pretty similar trajectory uh, with testicular cancer and prostate cancer. Uh, Cause you think about where all the cell phones are going in men's pockets. Then I thought about it. I got this giant phone cause my eyes are going. It's a huge screen and now she's telling me there's enough radiation kicking off this thing that screwing up the key card. So of course, where do I keep it all day, every day, like a genius? Right there next to my crash. Just <laughs> just microwaving my privates all day long. Now, can you say for certain that wireless is causing all this cancer? Well, absolutely not. But as I say, there are literally thousands of studies um, that are done in very controlled ways that do in fact correlate the rising cancer rates with the wireless exposure. So we're gonna get into that in a minute. Okay, I created this next graphic to make it uh, a little more easy to understand uh, the health effects of being exposed to certain levels of wireless radiation caused by specific devices. So you can see on the left-hand side, you've got these different devices and the approximate amount of radiation they emit. And then on the right-hand side, there are uh, different findings from studies of the correlated health effects of being exposed to that much wireless radiation. So let me back up for a minute. Wireless radiation is measured in a bunch of different ways, uh, but the most common way tends to be uh, in what's called milliwatts or milliwatts per square meter. And so this is a measurement of energy. So you think about uh, a light bulb as it has a wattage rating. What we're talking about is the same thing. It's the amount of energy uh, per certain amount of area. So one milliwatt per square meter is less than 50 watts per square meter. Pretty straightforward. Um, and you can see again here on this chart, uh, the approximate uh, wireless radiation levels of these different devices. And then on the right, the associated health risks. So the study that I tend to refer to most commonly is the study that was done in Germany. It's called the Nalia study. And what they did is they studied about a thousand people around a cell phone tower. And their findings were that after about five years, the people who lived right around that cell phone tower had triple the cancer rate of everybody else. So the key takeaway here isn't the cell phone tower, but the level of radiation that they were exposed to. Uh, in this case, it was just one milliwatt. So one milliwatt of radiation is enough to triple your cancer rate over five years. Now that said, one milliwatt is really not a lot. If you look at most of the devices that we have around us, they're emitting way more than that. Now granted, we're not necessarily sitting right next to those devices all the time for five or 10 years, but the studies tend to show that there is a cumulative effect. So in other words, uh, it doesn't go away. If you eat uh, a toxin, uh, you, your body then can process that out and eventually that, that toxin works its way back out of the body. Uh, it's not really like that with wireless radiation or any radiation for that matter. 
In fact, um, with more conventional radiation uh, measured in rads, you're allowed X amount of rads per year because the body doesn't just get rid of it. Uh, and so that's really the same case with this wireless radiation where you can absorb wireless radiation and have no ill effects from absorbing that wireless radiation, but it doesn't go away. And so then when you absorb more, it kind of stacks on top of it. And at some point, the human body gets to a tipping point where you start having uh, cellular malfunction. And that's when uh, the real serious health problems start to manifest. And that's what we're seeing right now worldwide. More and more people are becoming what's called electro hypersensitive because over the last 10 or 20 years, they've reached that threshold to the point now where anytime they're exposed to wireless radiation, uh, it causes a real severe reaction. I'm actually beginning to experience that myself. A few years back, uh, I ended up in the hospital and when I got out of the hospital, uh, I started learning about the wireless stuff, but I didn't have an immediate response when I was near a wireless device. Now I do. When I go near a wireless device um, unprotected, uh, nowadays I wear a lot of Faraday fabric clothing and I, uh, I use shielding, but when I'm exposed to that wireless radiation, uh, I feel the effects uh, almost immediately. And this is happening to more and more people around the world as uh, more and more people reach that threshold or that saturation point um, where all that wireless radiation has uh, accumulated over the years. Okay, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this next graphic. Uh, this study was done by Dr. Gandhi, somewhere here in the United States, I forget which university. This graphic basically shows uh, radiation penetrating into the human brain from a cell phone. And the interesting thing to note about this study is that what they found was that uh, children are much more susceptible to uh, the effects of wireless radiation. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that. One of the biggest reasons is that uh, children have thinner skulls, right? As we age, our skulls become thicker uh, and in turn uh, protect our brains a little better from that wireless radiation. Uh, but when we're uh, children or fetuses, uh, there is essentially no protection um, from the outside world to the brain. And so much more of that wireless radiation penetrates into the brain. The other thing to note here is that uh, for most of us adults, we weren't born with wireless devices. Uh, we may have been exposed to it for the last 20 years or so, uh, but prior to that, there wasn't a lot of wireless out there. Um, whereas uh, people born today are being exposed to wireless before they're even out of the womb. So they're gonna have a much harder road than we are uh, because they're gonna reach their saturation points uh, at a much younger age than we have. Okay, this next graphic uh, I created, uh, this is actually a map of my house before I dealt with my wireless situation. Uh, you can see all these different numbers on here. These represent uh, how much radiation um, in terms of milliwatts per square meter uh, I was being exposed to in the different rooms in my house and next to my devices. Uh, now I've subsequently cleaned this up and eliminated about 95 to 99% of the wireless radiation in my house. Uh, but this is pretty typical. Um, we don't actually have a smart TV. We don't really use Bluetooth, um, but uh, we do have a lot of laptops. Uh, we had some wireless mice, uh, cell phones, obviously access point. Uh, all of these things were emitting wireless radiation. And so what that was giving us was uh, basically an unsafe environment, no matter where you were in our house. Now, the way I determined this was with uh, uh, a meter. This is an RF meter. This one's made by Cornet. I really like it. It's really easy to use. Uh, it's very easy to understand. You basically just go around and it'll tell you exactly how much wireless radiation you're being exposed to. Now you don't need to go out and buy a meter. It's pretty easy to determine approximately how much wireless radiation is coming out of these devices without actually going and holding a meter to them. Uh, wireless access points tend to be 300 plus milliwatts. Cell phones, uh, same thing. I've seen some of them actually go up to five, six, seven hundred uh, milliwatts. Uh, and in some cases, I've seen them actually max out my meter. I forget what that number is, but cell phones do emit a lot of radiation. Access points emit a lot of radiation. Um, laptops, tablets, uh, they emit a fair bit of radiation, not quite as much, but still a fair bit. Uh, those wireless earbuds, uh, Bluetooth speakers, other Bluetooth devices, they're all emitting. Uh, now, one nice thing about having a meter, uh, and if you wanna go get a meter, you can go on Amazon for $200, you can get yourself a good meter. Uh, one nice thing about having the meter is that you can uh, find things that are emitting wireless radiation that you wouldn't have otherwise known. 
I've certainly had several circumstances now where um, I thought that I dealt with all of the wireless radiation in an environment, and then I pulled out the meter, and sure enough, there was something that uh, I didn't know about that was actually sitting there basically blasting out that radiation. Okay, this page is from my book. Uh, this is just a chart of a bunch of different studies. Uh, you can see on the left-hand side, this is the level of radiation that was studied in this particular study. And then on the right, uh, the health effects uh, that they found associated with that level of radiation. Now, the interesting thing to note here is that we're not talking about real high levels here. Um, if you remember from the previous uh, graphic, uh, a typical person is probably being bathed in one milliwatt uh, most of the time, if not more. Uh, now that's gonna vary greatly, right? If you sit in the same room as your access point, if you're sitting four feet away from your access point, it's gonna be way higher than one milliwatt. Um, if you don't have a lot of wireless uh, devices in your environment, uh, it may be a lot less than one milliwatt. But uh, I would say that the average Westerner is probably being subjected to at least one milliwatt uh, most of the time. And so all of these studies are ordered um, in order of power level or intensity of that radiation. So you can basically correlate uh, how much radiation you're being exposed to to the health effect. And then you can just assume that all of the previous studies uh, at lower levels of radiation also apply to you. These next few pages came right from the Bioinitiative Report. I really highly recommend you check out the Bioinitiative Report. They've done a really fantastic job there of rounding up over 4,000 studies and summarizing it. So you don't need to go and read every single study. You can basically just look at uh, the summary of what all of these studies found. And the Bioinitiative Report was done by a bunch of scientists from all over the world, from all different backgrounds. These are physicists and biologists and uh, so on and so forth. They basically looked at all these thousands of studies and uh, then summarized all the results in the Bioinitiative Report. Now, the findings of the Bioinitiative Report are essentially that, yes, uh, wireless radiation is causing health problems. Uh, there's a huge list of those health problems. and. Uh, it's a great website to go to look and understand more about what those health problems may be. Now, this is another big problem that I see is that a lot of people are having health problems that they haven't associated with wireless exposure. And so um, maybe kids having behavioral problems or learning problems or attention problems. Uh, maybe someone's having trouble sleeping at night uh, or they're developing early onset dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, there are all sorts of different health problems that um, a lot of people just don't know are correlated to wireless exposure. And as you look through the different uh, potential health risks of wireless, you'll see that almost any problem that you can experience could potentially be being caused by the wireless exposure. Um, so the nice thing about uh, making a change to how much wireless exposure you're having is that the results are pretty quick. Uh, I've had a lot of clients call me and say, hey, I'm sleeping way better since you turned off that wireless access point, or um, my brain fog is gone since I've been really careful about how I use my phone, or uh, my 10-year-old who is having migraines every single day hasn't had a headache since we dealt with the wireless situation in our house. Um, so it's really rewarding to see uh, how fast you can make a difference uh, to health effects uh, by making usually pretty easy adjustments to your environment. Uh, we don't have to give up all of the devices that we fall in love with. Some of them, yeah, maybe, um, but a lot of devices can be utilized differently than we've become accustomed to, to using them um, to help eliminate a lot of that wireless exposure. I still use my cell phone. I still have a wireless access point. Uh, I still use my laptop. Um, you know, I've got all kinds of electronic devices that I rely on, um, but in being diligent about how I use them and changing some of the settings and using some appropriate shielding and so forth, um, all very inexpensive, uh, I've eliminated probably about 95 to 99% of my wireless exposure. Okay, that's about all I'm gonna get into in this video. I'm gonna be making some more videos uh, where I'm really gonna dig into um, the specifics of how to mitigate how much wireless you're being exposed to. So we're gonna talk about maybe changing some settings on your wireless access point, maybe using some, uh, some shielding to block 
the radiation from hitting your body. Uh, there's a bunch of things that can be done uh, that are generally very easy and very inexpensive uh, that make a huge difference in how much radiation you're absorbing. But the key takeaway from this video is that um, this is a serious issue. It's no joke. Uh, a few years ago, uh, I was becoming aware of it and I thought it was maybe moderately concerning. Um, now with what I've learned, uh, all the research I've done, all the studies I've been through, the documentaries I've seen, um, this problem seems to be a lot more serious uh, than I thought and that I think most people think. Um, wireless causes are really significant health risk and it's beginning to take its toll on people all over the world. So now that you know, you can start taking action. As I say, we're gonna get into those specific actions in some future videos, uh, but I encourage you to go poke around a little bit, try to get a little more information. Now, be aware, there's a lot of misinformation out there. This is not information that uh, T-Mobile and Verizon and Spectrum want people digging into. Um, there, I've seen plenty of videos of people basically refuting um, the health risks of wireless. Uh, but the reality is at this point, um, the, the jury's in, the verdict is in, uh, wireless exposure most certainly causes health problems. Uh, it just takes time. Uh, you're not gonna experience those problems on day one, uh, probably not gonna experience them on day 100, uh, but you give it uh, 10 or 20 years and then it's gonna manifest into something really serious. And the unfortunate aspect of this is that oftentimes um, those health problems are irreversible. Uh, I've had several people now die of brain cancer uh, on the right side of their head where they held their cell phone or had their Bluetooth headset. Um, and that's really sad. So I'm trying to get the message out there. Share this message with your friends and family. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Hit the little notification thing so you get updates when I post these other videos uh, to help you deal with your specific uh, devices and help you stay safe. So with that, stay safe. Be aware of the wireless radiation coming from your devices. Um, spread the word and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. This is where we stand.